And we begin at five with a tragedy in Washington, a driver dead after a tree fell on his truck near Woodland. Thanks for joining us. Incredible pictures tonight. I am David Molko. And I'm Laurel Porter. Mike Benner has been looking into the story this afternoon for us and joins us in the newsroom. Mike. Yeah, Laurel, good evening. Your heart just breaks for the family and friends of the man who was behind the wheel of the pickup truck that was crushed by the falling tree. This happened this morning along State Route 503, just to the northeast of Woodland, Washington. Authorities say Edward Norton of Woodland was driving northbound on SR 503, also known as Lewis River Road, when a large tree on a hillside fell and hit Norton's vehicle. The 53 year old died at the scene. We can tell you the road was shut down for several hours as detectives investigated and crews cleared the debris. The highway has since reopened. In the meantime, this deadly accident comes in the wake of a winter blast that saw hundreds of trees topple over in the Portland metro area. Well, thank you, Mike. And as we widen out here beyond that tragedy and beyond the city limits of Portland, it's easy to see why the tree tally could be in the thousands. You know, a little sunshine out there this evening, a glimpse of that elusive spring. But Matt Savino, I got to bring you in here and I got to say more snowflakes this morning. Hail on and off all day, more trees down in spots. Where does this end? Yeah, it'll end pretty much tomorrow. Now we've got a chance for low elevation snow tomorrow morning, but I think it'll be less than today or at least not more than what we had today. And today was nearly as bad as it was earlier in the week. So yes, there is still some snow in the forecast up in the Cascades. Another eight inches there in the valley. Still some dark clouds out there. We've got showers. We've had thunderstorms. So yes, it has been another very active and dynamic day around the northwest and that line of showers from Lake Oswego up through the east side of town and up in the eastern Clark County and Skamania counties. Uh, still quite active, and so we could yet scratch out a, a clap of thunder or a bolt of lightning tonight along with some small hail. Showers will increase a little bit overnight tonight as we see another area of low pressure off the coast begin to swing inland, but it's not as strong as its predecessor, so I don't think we'll get the precipitation rates we need to get snow that matters, sticking snow down to the valley floor. Staying cold, though, right through Saturday, trace to an inch of snow possible above 500 feet up in the hills again. For the most part, it shouldn't exacerbate the tree problem or the road problems up there. And I'm saying mainly rain below 500 feet for the valley floor because we could still yet get a few wet snowflakes coming down, but nothing that's going to stick. So we'll get there. We just need to get through the next couple days. Back to you. What a week it's been so far. Thank you, Matt. A man died and a woman was injured after an early morning house fire in northeast Portland. Fire officials say the victim is 59 year old David Johnson. They haven't released the name of the injured woman. She is in critical condition. The fire started at about four this morning at a house on northeast 57th between Wygant and Going Streets. Firefighters described the home as an extreme hoarder situation that made it harder to navigate inside. It's hard to navigate calling it an extreme hoarder situation. And the cause of the fire is under investigation. All right, let's take you south because there was overnight fire trouble in Medford as well. A huge blaze at a fuel depot there forced evacuations near the city's downtown. The fire destroyed at least four buildings, including some businesses. Now early on, fire crews had to call in heavy foam trucks from the airport to help. No one was injured. No word yet on the cause there. A woman is still on the run, wanted in a robbery in Troutdale. It happened at the Columbia Gorge outlets yesterday afternoon. Police say three suspects tried to drive away from the scene, but eventually crashed. One of them is accused of shooting at deputies during the chase. They have arrested a man and woman, but the third suspect is still out there. Anyone with information about her is asked to contact the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office. A couple moving from California to the Columbia River Gorge just lost everything they own. They were 10 minutes from their new home when they decided to stay at a Troutdale Hotel overnight. Then they woke up to find their U-Haul and car stolen. Joe Ranieri has more on what they lost. The couple got into town late last night and decided to park their U-Haul truck and their trailer behind the Comfort Inn. To hear the couple talked to the front desk at the Comfort Inn who told them to move their U-Haul truck and their trailer to the front of the building. That way it would be safer. Hours later, it was gone. No. Melissa Enoch Rex is still in shock after all of her family's belongings were stolen. It's sad. Um, antique dress collection, <laughs> like just silly things, but they, they were my silly things. And after spending the last two days driving from the central California coast to Oregon, 
they decided to pull off and stay the night at this Troutdale Comfort Inn that was just about 10 minutes from their new home. The house that we're moving into is, is just here in Bridal Vale, uh, so we were close, but we didn't want to come in you know, late at night in the dark, not really familiar with everything. When they woke up Wednesday morning, they found out their U-Haul truck, along with their 1990 Mazda Miata, were stolen. And apparently at 4 o'clock in the morning, the, the lady at the desk saw it driving away. The lady working the front desk called police, but it was too late. Everything the couple owned was inside that 15-foot trailer. My grandmother's silver, you know, just like these, these things that, again, it, it is stuff, it is just stuff, but it, it's super sentimental stuff. The real sentimental stuff she wants back more than anything. There was obviously furniture, um, clothing, kitchen wares, you know, it was our, our whole lives, but what, what keeps, like, I, I just keep remembering certain things like my, all of my son's photos from when he was a baby. This is the U-Haul trailer with Arizona license plates AJ28920. Here's another look at the Miata that has a distinct yellow spoiler on the back. It has California license plates 7ZKC265. I get that. The car's definitely gone. Um, but if, if we could just have the stuff back, <laughs> that would make our lives here so much easier. Melissa and her husband say they have gone through a lot worse. We've been through stuff before. We used to live on the Delaware River in New Jersey and our house flooded three times in the time that we lived there. So we've, we've experienced big loss before. She says losing what she describes as her silly things. It's just stuff. It is. It's just stuff. But not my pictures. Is what she wants back the most. In Troutdale. It's just tough. Joe Ranieri, KGW News. Just stuff, but also their story. Hope someone spots that quickly. In Washington, the State Board of Health voted today not to require the COVID vaccine for public school students. Some parents had raised concerns about a requirement saying it would cause them to pull their kids out of schools. The Washington chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics also said that while vaccinating school aged children against COVID is safe and effective, it did not endorse a mandate and staying in Washington state health officials need help from the public to tackle what they call an alarming problem and it's one we've seen on both sides of the Columbia. They are now urging people not just first responders to carry naloxone that is due to a rise in drug related overdose deaths. Naloxone is often known by its brand name Narcan. It's designed to rapidly reverse the effects of an opioid overdose and last year more than 2000 people in Washington died from an overdose. That's up 66% from 2019. In financial news, unemployment in Oregon has returned to pre-pandemic levels. New numbers show the rate was at 3.8% in March, down from 4% in February. That's also compared to 6.1% a year ago. The last time Oregon unemployment was this low was in March of 2020 at 3.5%. If you have been anywhere near the Moda Center during some concerts or Blazers games, then you know the word gridlock really takes on new meaning. Then let's bring in Brian Clerkley now on a new city parking plan to reduce some of that congestion. And Brian, at first glance, this seems to be essentially charging more for the exact same spaces. Hey, David. Well, Peabot is going to charge a little bit more to park in the event parking district during large events like games and concerts. This district will stretch throughout the Lloyd district and throughout the Rose Quarter. And, you know, it'll cost a bit more to park, but they hope to alleviate some of the traffic. If you've ever gone to a Trailblazers game or a concert at the Moda Center, you know a parking spot is hard to come by. According to Dylan Rivera with the Portland Bureau of Transportation, about 90 large events happen around this area each year. Thousands of people who come to the Lloyd District for these events often end up parking on nearby neighborhood streets, creating congestion, traffic, and pollution from stalling cars. 90% of the parking spaces are taken up during events. And so uh, this event district will help manage that demand, will help make sure there's parking available for folks that live and work in the district, even on those 90 days a year when there is uh, a large event in the area. Clint Moran lives in the Lloyd district and experiences that congestion firsthand. Well, it creates a situation you can't park in your own area or your own neighborhood. The Lloyd Center has a huge, huge parking area, and it seems a shame that most of it is, goes unused. 
To tackle all the congestion that comes with a big concert or game, Peabot wants to create a new event parking district. During these large events, Peabot will charge $3 an hour for metered parking inside the area in hopes more people use public transit to get there or carpool. The parking is currently $1 an hour. Well, I think it sounds like a really good idea because there's, especially with the weather getting nicer, there's going to be all kinds of things going on and it would be really convenient and handy for everybody. It would be great. City Council is expected to vote on this ordinance April 20th, and if it passes, PBOT will implement it in September. David Laurel. Thank you, Brian.